I'm going to take you through my 2023 Mercedes F1 steering wheel. I mean, as you can see, there's so many different buttons, different rotaries on here. There's thousands and thousands of different setups. You can have the button that I use the most will be this white one, which is torque. So no big prizes. If anybody can guess what that is, that is the button to talk to my team. Over time, you learn exactly where every single button is, but when I hold the steering wheel, you'll see that everything is within one movement away. So I don't have to move my hand so much. My thumb reaches all of these buttons quite easily, whether it's one of these rotaries. The only time you have to take your hand off is when you're changing the strap mode. And the main function of this is how much battery is used for a given lap. So for a qualifying lap, we would go to the purple position, strat two, which is where I'm in at the moment. Strat two is basically there to deploy all of the battery. So that qualifying lap is like a sprint. You want that 100% battery at the beginning and you want to finish when you cross the line, that qualifying lap at 0%, use all the battery available. This yellow one here, which is the pit lane speed limiter. So you're coming to the pit lane, your brake as late as possible. I'll click that yellow button and then my speed limit will be on. And then once you've done your pit stop, you've got out of the pit lane. It's really important to click that button again as soon as possible to get going again when you re-enter the track. This is the DRS. So whenever I click this button, the rear wing of the car will open up it will shed all of the drag and we'll probably end up going about 20 to 30 kilometers an hour quicker in the straight. So when you're trying to overtake a car, that top left button is crucial. This one here, which says B-BAL, which stands for brake balance. So we have four brakes on the car, both on the front, both on the rear. And it depends whether you want that at a perfect 50-50 balance. Most of the time, most teams, most cars, you run the brake balance around 58%. And the reason you got more on the front is because when the car breaks into a corner, all of that weight is being pushed onto the front tires, onto the front axle of the car. And you need to have more of the brakes on the front to deal with that extra pressure that you're feeling. So if you're struggling with locking the front tires, as you see, you go into a corner, a driver turns, your smoke coming from the tire, you might want to bring that balance a bit more rearwards. So that's a really useful tool. The in button here is not a button you want to be pressing when you're out on track because that is the neutral button. You'll pull into the pit bay in first gear, click the end button and you're down into neutral so you can take your hands off the clutch and the car can uh, be looked after by the mechanics. But the other thing with this button, if you press and hold it, is the reverse button. So during a lap, you're constantly tweaking these settings to really get the most out of your car. Over the course of a lap, you're probably making five or six changes a lap, just as the car's evolving, the tires are getting hotter as you progress through the lap. Uh, and you need to have a sort of a unique setting for each individual scenario. So it's not probably a case of just be set it up and, and away you go. You've got you to fine tune these things. So this is my 2023 race seat. I find the, the seat pretty comfortable, to be honest. This is absolutely tailor-made to my body. So how this is made is we sit in a big bag of foam. And as that foam is in liquid, it sort of goes all around your, your body, it, it expands. And once the foam has set, it's basically got a mold of your body. So this only weighs, I think less than two kilos. It's incredibly light for, for the size of it. But when you're racing for getting on for two hours, you want to be in a comfy position. So this is roughly the angle of which we're sat, obviously very, very reclined. And a couple of reasons for that, we want to get the center of gravity as low as possible. 
Obviously, if I sat really upright like this, as you would be, let's say, in an ordinary chair, all of that weight from your body and your, and your head is, is quite up high, and that makes the car go slower. So that is not what we want. The way the seat fits into the car is with these four pins. So we've got one pin here, one pin there, and the same on the other side. So that literally just slots straight into the car. And then we've got these flags at the top, these carbon fiber flags, and that fits perfectly flush into the car. So once my shoulders are in, it can't flex. Where these green stickers are is where the extraction buckle is. So what this is, is if ever you're in a big incident and the medical team need to lift you out of the car, they will strap into these six plugs and this seat will effectively just sort of slide out of the car with me strapped in there. Hopefully that's a position you never want to be in, but it's good to know that the team can get you out. We have six straps to hold us in. So we have the lap strap, which will come from the bottom of the chassis over the seat and across my lap. We have a little buckle holding it into position. We've got the shoulder strap, which will come from the chassis over my shoulder and meet that lap strap in the middle. And then just underneath, you see that little hole in the bottom of the seat and they're your crotch straps. So they'll come from the chassis on the floor under the seat, up the seat through this gap. These crotch straps are really important because they're not tight enough. When we're braking and you've got five or six year of force under braking, it's sometimes possible that you slide in the seat and you sort of get a bit lower and that's not a comfortable position to be in. Equally, it's really important that these rib support is as tight as possible to your ribs. So when you're going around the corner, you're not being flown around and you're sort of locked in position. But on the flip side, if they're too high, it's gonna start catching on the side. And so it's a really fine line of having the height to give you the support, but not being high enough that it catches your bicep. The car is so small, you gotta find these these margins to just get enough, but not too much. And then finally, in my seat, there's a little cutout along my spine, which is filled in with foam, just to give me a little bit of support on my spine for, for obvious reasons, and equally on my shoulders. So I've just got a bit of padding in here. So I've got quite bony shoulders. I like to have a little bit of support so these three pads help a bit to not bruise me up. And that's the race seat.